If you want to support these projects, head over to mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the Inspire Change t-shirts and much, much more. And please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button down below. Before that, let's jump into the highlights. Growing up in the city of Baltimore was challenging. You know, as a kid, you know, it was a lot of drug infested areas in our neighborhood, uh, a lot of shooting, a lot of violence. Um, unfortunately for me, at the age of five, you know, I got shot, you know, being outside, being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, my mom and dad was going crazy, not knowing that I was outside and then knowing that, you know, I was one of the kids laying out there with a couple buckshots all over his body was very frightening and scary for them as well as myself. You know, things can happen once you go outside your door. And uh, for me, you know, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. A fight broke out. Uh, they bust the old man Chester's uh, window. He decided to come outside and, and um, you know, wreak habit, and, 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 uh, so to speak, in terms of take out uh, some frustration. So he went in this shed and grabbed his double barrel shotgun and just started firing into the crowd amongst all these kids. And it's like I said, unfortunately, I was one of the kids that got hit. Well, the projects is uh, low income housing. Um, it's more predicated to a housing authority. Um, you have high rise buildings, high rise buildings and apartments stacked on top of one another, as well as low rise uh, apartments. Um, and that's the way, you know, low income families, you know, live. And that's how we was able to, you know, that was the atmosphere that we grew up in. Uh, we didn't know anything other than that, you know, because we didn't experience anything outside of it, um, besides what you saw on TV. Um, but it was, uh, it was our life, you know, it was a man of growing up. I mean, no one felt like they, no one thought they have a life expectancy past 20, you know, and which was very strange, you know, knowing that that was the case, but that was the mindset back then because we had a lot of guys at a young age dying, um, mainly because, you know, they wanted that fast money. They wanted to get into that world a lot sooner and uh, they wanted to, you know, possibly take care of their family as well as want something good, um, to try to provide for their, you know, for their household. So, you know, people did all sorts of things in terms of trying to make ends meet. But, uh, you know, that was a, again, that was the neighborhood and the atmosphere that we grew up in. Well, luckily that we had a game called basketball and sports. You know, sports was really uh, a mechanism that kept us really at a safe, it kept us, uh, where it gave us a safe haven place to really feel comfortable with. Uh, football, baseball, uh, basketball, ran track. I was a wrestler. You know, we had a, a lot of sports take place in the neighborhood. You know, we had a lot of projects, uh, challenges against one another. That was a competition, you know, Lafayette against Latrobe, against uh, uh, Madison, against uh, uh, Cherry Hill. So you had different neighborhoods, uh, you know, competing against one another. And we had all sorts of sports. So that was a way of keeping us, you know, off the streets, keeping our mind, you know, active in other areas, as opposed to thinking about, you know, hey, it's time to try to you know, go over and get a few of those quick dollars. But uh, sports was, uh, you know, was a place where it really kept a lot of kids uh, safe. You know, at that time, I had no inkling or no idea that, you know, I wanted to pursue this as a career. You know, it was just a hobby. It was just something that I wanted to do. Um, but unfortunately for me, you know, being small and uh, trying to play a sport that didn't know at the time was supposed to have been meant for a big or taller player, you know, Got a lot of criticism from it, you know, a lot of uh, backlash, a lot of name calling, you know, which could affect which confidence. Well, at the beginning, you know, it was challenging. It was tough, you know, many days, many nights going home, just crying to my mom and just telling her how cruel the kids are out there and, you know, how mean they were, you know. And uh, But she was always, you know, always just quick to say that it had no idea what basketball was about, but she was quick to say, you know, Ty, I was tired for her at the time. You know, Ty, they ain't, don't let them, you know, take your joy. If you like playing basketball, you go out there and play. You know, no one's gonna be an expert on your life. They don't know how big your heart or know what your capabilities are. If you wanna play, you just go out there and play. And at the time, I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, yeah, okay, mom, but you know, those things didn't register at the time. You know, I just focused more or less on the kids being so mean and cruel towards me and uh, because I was trying to pursue a game that they thought was meant for taller players. So. That was a, you know, that was the image that I had back in those days. The hobby turned into a passion. I think once I got, I think we came around about 10, 11, you know, I started learning the game. I started understanding the game. Uh, I was being taught by a gentleman by Leon Howard, who was a director at the Recreation Center. He took myself and Reggie Williams, who was blessed to go on and play in the NBA with, uh, as well, one of the four guys come out of high school, was fortunate enough to play in, high, uh, play in the NBA. But he and I, as a kid, 
uh, was just sponges, you know, soaking up all sorts of information from Mr. Howard, who was the director at the uh, recreation center. He took us under his wing and he kind of introduced the game in a different light, meaning the fundamentals of the game. And that's really what I needed, how to understand the important, uh, the fundamentals of the game, how to dribble, how to shoot, get it over top of a bigger, taller guy, how to create space, you know, how to run a point guard position, you know, what my responsibilities are at that position. And he really embedded all that information into us. And that's when the game really changed and slowed down in my mind. And I start really believing that, you know, I could play this game one day, you know, possibly go to college. And wasn't thinking about NBA at the time, but it was thinking about possibly going to high school and getting a, a college education from it. And it means to change the narrative of my families. Crazy go. I mean, not knowing it was going to be Division One, I, I just wanted to play basketball. You know, whichever way, if it had been a Division Two, I'd probably have been satisfied. But knowing the type of kid that I was and who I was and the competitive type of person, I wanted it all. You know, I wasn't just going to satisfy, satisfy with what someone else had planned for me. You know, I, I wanted to create my own destiny and I start to understand that I was in a position to do that. And, you know, when I became 12 and 13 years old, you know, words never matter. You know, it came in one day out the other. You know, I was on a journey. I was on my path trying to become this basketball player that no one felt like he had any, you know, any opportunity to do so. Because at the time, coaches were still in the mindset of big guards. You know, big guards was the key of running our program. So we was trying to break down those barriers, you know, trying to you know, break the mindsets of these coaches and let them know that, you know, I can be just as impactful, you know, as at this size and run your program and just be, in the, be just as, as effective as a taller player. Uh, little kids, I mean, any, any little little jokes that step was out there, you know, um, if you're short, you know, you need to be sitting on the curb with your feet swinging off, or, you know, we can put you in the drawer when we're traveling, you know. As they said, you know, you, you grown up as a kid when they say sticks and stones may hurt your bones, but words, words will never hurt you. It's not true. Words will hurt you now and they're killing folks. So words are very powerful, very powerful. So the thing is about getting within yourself and understanding who you are to kind of, you know, ward off those negative comments that's coming toward you because, you know, as a kid, you know, you're not as strong you know, as you are as an adult. So when I was a kid, you know, those things was very hurtful. And, it, you know, that was very deterring at the time, but it didn't distract me. Because your heart, you know, it measure, it pretty much doesn't have a height to it. You know, it pretty much set the tone of who you are and what you're able to accomplish, you know, and the height factor was the game of basketball. So, you know, my heart was bigger than my height. So I didn't have no, no second or no, no hangups on or believing that I belong with, you know, the best of the best. You know, because my heart was just as, you know, just as big as theirs. Well, I think God created us as He, as He put you in, puts you in uh, right in front of you. You know, and He, I have no, you know, I never second guess Him what He was able to do for me. Um, I think I was born this way, you know, with the idea to take on those type of challenges, to face those type of the things that happened happened to me in my life, allowed me to reflect, allowed me to, you know to resonate who I am, you know, especially when I got shot. You know, those things became so clear in terms of, hey, I almost wasn't here, you know, so why I have to worry about what someone else said that could hurt me and deteriorate me from becoming who I want to be. So, you know, that changed my mindset. You know, I remember early on when I used to go down on the court with my basketball and hearing all the words and hearing all the, you know, the criticism about me being short. Um, but after I got shot, I remember going back down there and hearing those same criticism about myself, but it didn't have the same impact. You know, it went in one ear out the other, as I alluded to earlier. So I think that has something to do with it. You know, it had a lot to do with my mindset in terms of, you know, what I thought and, and what I believed, and it allowed me to, you know, enter a platform that, you know, not many was able to accomplish at my height. Oh, adversity always prepare you. You know, you have to go through those things in order to see the light at the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel you know i don't think anything is gonna just be like this throughout your life you know you have to go through that difficult overcome obstacle you know because it's it's a testament of your character or who you are and how you're able to deal with certain things in order to get yourself back on that playing field if you enjoyed the video please consider going to mulliganbrothers.com where you can now buy the new inspire change t-shirts the lfg t-shirts the hardest worker in the room t-shirts Everybody who's been supporting us has made this project possible and projects like this in the future possible. 
we cannot fly all around the world with our film crew and ourselves and do these interviews and documentaries without your support. So thank you very much. The support has been amazing and we appreciate it. Um, also, there is a join button down below where you can consider becoming